Star Realms is a deck building game. Everything you need for two players to play comes in a little box uh, that you can hold in your hand, and it uh, uh, costs 15 bucks. Uh, comes with 128 cards. Um, there are some scorecards to keep track of your uh, your authority. Um, so authority is like life in Magic. Basically, you start with a score of 50 authority. Your goal is to reduce your opponent's authority to zero. If you can reduce them to zero, you they're out of the game. So if you're playing a two-player game, you, you reduce your score to zero, you win. Um, you uh, each each player starts a little deck of ten cards. There are eight scouts and two vipers. Scouts, when you play them, give you a trade. It's like money. You use it to buy cards during the course of the game. And vipers give you combat, and combat's used to attack your opponent. When you attack your opponent, you lower their score by the amount you attack them. So if you attack them for two points, their score goes down by two. They go from fifty to forty-eight. Um, each turn you get a five card hand, you get a new hand each turn, you can play all your cards for free, you just drop them on the table and do what they say on them, and so you'll get some money and some combat, you use the money to buy cards. Now, that portion of the game is kind of like booster drafting in Magic, um, you'll have uh, five cards laid out on the table, and they have a cost in the upper right hand corner, and so let's say you had four trade, you could buy any combination of cards that cost four or less. So you could buy one card that costs four, or two cards that cost two, or you know any combination you want to do. When you buy a card, it goes to your discard pile. When you run out of cards in your deck, um, because you're drawing that five card hand each turn, um, you take your discard pile, you shuffle it up, and that becomes your new deck. So the cards you're buying go into your discard pile. When you need to draw more cards, shuffle your discard pile, make a new deck, and draw cards from there. So after a few turns, the cards you bought before, you'll end up drawing them in, uh, into your hand. Um, so you get to customize your deck as you're playing and build for a specific goal. There's two types of cards. There's ships. Ships, you play them, they do what they say, and in turn they go to the discard pile. And then there are bases. Um, bases are printed sideways and have a little shield on the bottom of them. Um, bases are permanents. They stay in play. You're kind of like a creature or a planeswalker in Magic. You play them, they stay out there. You get to use them every turn. Your opponent can decide to attack your bases if they want to. They can use their, your, their combat to attack one of your bases. If they can do damage equal to the base's shield in a single turn, it will destroy the base, and the base will go to your discard pile. So you can draw it again later, but it takes it out of commission for a while. Uh, so you end up with uh, tactics where you're deciding, do I attack my opponent, do I attack their bases, which of their bases do I attack, uh, and long-term strategies where you're trying to decide what kind of deck you want, or you're trying to build, and making your purchase decisions based on that. And now you can play the game on PC, on Mac, and on phones. What was the challenge in you know getting a cross-platform like that? So, um, yeah, so this was a big task. So we were simultaneously making a physical card game, um, which on its own is a huge production. You've got, uh, you've got uh, um, the design, the development, uh, the, the graphic design, artwork, um, and then uh, printing and importing and getting into distribution. And this, there's a, a bazillion different things when you're making a physical product. But at the same time, we were making the digital version of the game. So as we would tweak the cards and tweak the rules, we'd hand the rules off to T uh, Tan, and he would um, uh, be programming and tweaking and changing uh, uh, the game. And uh, so um, uh, one of the big advantages we had was he was using the uh, Unity uh, pro uh, software um, which allows uh, allows you to uh, basically simultaneously design uh, 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 code for for these multiple device types. Um, and uh, obviously, there's separate debugging <laughs> that you have to do for each uh, for each one. But so the base code um, was usable across the across the platforms. So what we would basically uh, choose a platform, and we would work exclusively on that for a little while and get the gameplay the way we want it to be and then uh, then we'd update all the other platforms and play those and you know and and, uh, and you know not get the bugs out of uh, you know out of uh, out of those as well um, the most challenging with those was uh, Android so um, uh, there's a 
lot of different device types for Android. Like, you know, it's sort of, you know, open source, basically. And so um, with, like, an iOS device, you can test on the iPhone and the iPad and that and maybe an iPad mini. And if you try it on all those and it works, you're good to go. But with Android, you can, you know, there's bazillion different phone types and tablet types and you can have it working on almost on every single one you try and then release it into you know the Google Play Store and then somebody with you know some device type you hadn't used yet will say yeah my screen freezes up on me and you have to like you know okay track down that particular bug so it's it's impossible to fully test out the uh, um, the uh, uh, Android um, so you know so that that made things a little more uh, challenging, but uh, um, but yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun. We did, yeah we designed a whole bunch of new content for the digital game. There's um, the uh, campaign um, that exists only in digital, where you can play against different missions. Uh, and um, with the uh, with the digital game, it's a free download, so you can download the game and you can play versus the Easy AI, and you can play a six mission campaign, all free. Uh, and you can play on any of these device types. So you can really do like it. You can spend five bucks and upgrade, and then you can play on uh, um, you can uh, play on medium and hard AI modes. And you can play you get another uh, campaign chapter, um, uh, and you can play the entire campaign again on hard mode, which is super challenging. Uh, so there's uh, um, there's just a ton of play there, and if you spend that five bucks, you get the upgrade on all your device types. So you can pay, you know, five bucks for the game on your PC, and then up, uh, then uh, upgrade on your phone for free, and upgrade on your tablet for free, or your Mac for free. So it's uh, you only have to buy the upgrade once. That's pretty cool. Um, overall, we've seen, you know, like. As far as board games itself, it's not as if they ever went away. I mean, there's a lot of uh, great board games, card games out there uh, that people are playing. But it seems like over the last couple of years, there was like a surge of people playing it. Like it really got popular where you're seeing like cafes, um, you're seeing like web streams, you're seeing websites dedicated just to the tabletop aspect. With so much saturation of video games, what would you say in your opinion, you know, creating games, playing uh, tabletop games, what do you think it was that has got, you know, not only gamers of the past, but brand new gamers to get into tabletop gaming? Well, I, uh, I think that the fact that, like, um, you, I think we're pulling some people in from digital. So if the um, tablets, like iPads um, and the equivalent, are perfect uh, devices for playing board games. Like, um, digital adaptations of board games are really fun and beautiful on, uh, you know, on that format. Um, so you've got have people who've been playing the physical games all along, um, but add to that people who are discovering the board games through the digital version uh, of them, uh, because they download it on their, you know, on their phone or their tablet or their PC. Um, and so there's there has been an explosion of uh, digital translations of existing board games, uh, and I think that has, you know, sort of uh, widened, you know, broadened the the um, the base of uh, of board game players. Because you know, you try it out, you learn the rules, you try it out on the digital version, and then you're much more likely to go out and buy the physical version, so you can sit down across the kitchen table, or if you're in a you know board gaming cafe or something. You know, and you see the game on the shelf. Oh, I already know how to play that one. You can grab that and sit down, and, and you know, and play the physical version. So I think there's some crossover there between the digital and the physical. Um, and you know, I've certainly seen that with both uh, Ascension and Star Realms. Uh, 